chapter 29. Gentlemen, today I want to talk about a lady. A favorite subject of most men. <laughs> Is that all right? So ladies, you're going to have to catch hold of this because this woman you will want to emulate. Don't get jealous. This is all Bible time. Amen. All right? It's, this is something a man looks for um, in a woman. Y'all there? All right. All right. Y'all probably like, where is he going today? <laughs> what is this all about? So we've been talking about the power to tread over the last few weeks, how you have to have your stuff in order when it comes to you treading ground, when it comes to you working in uncharted territories. So this is just another piece in the series, and I, and, and I want you to understand it from a spiritual standpoint more than from a natural standpoint. When I, when I say that, is there's a way of walking in the spirit and not in the flesh. Amen? And the Bible gives us keys about walking in the spirit. And I don't care what anyone says. God is never a liar. Okay? The word of God is true. And we need to be able to honor that and be able to walk into that. Um, out of the book of Deuteronomy chapter 29, the word of the Lord says in verse 29, The secret things belong to the Lord our God. But those things which are revealed belong to us and to our generational children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. The secret things belong to the Lord. That means there are some things that are hidden that will not be revealed until God's timing. They belong to the Lord, but the things that are revealed, once things are revealed, they belong not only to us, but they belong to our children. Today, I want to talk about the lady in a believer's life. There is a lady in the believer's life, and that's what we're going to talk about today. It's very important. And you probably say, is that my mama? Who is that? This is not Mother's Day. So <laughs> we're not talking about your mom. But I need you to understand the perspective that God looks at things, and I'm going to tell you how the perspective came forth. Amen. Shall we pray? Father, I thank you uh, just for destiny, and I thank you for purpose. I thank you that you set us apart uh, for certain things. We are here in this city, this county, this region, uh, so that we might purpose your plans here in the earth. We honor you for that which you've done. We honor you for all that you continue to do. We thank you that you're sending us forward. Consecrate our hearts to hear the word that we might know your truth and walk in it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So you've heard here, God says, the things that are revealed belong to um, us and to our children. Thank you, greeters. Um, our God, and this is very important, is a God of generations. So therefore, no matter what you go through in your life, it's not just for you. There are some before you that you will bring, as even Abraham brought his own dad, and there are some behind you that you will lead into truth. So no matter who you are, you're, you're helping someone. And some of you say, well, I don't have um, children. Well, you have brothers, you have sisters, you have family members, you got nieces, nephews, aunts, uncles. You got people that you will constantly lead into a place of truth, or into a place of darkness, no matter where you are. And how you spew things out of your mouth will have all to do with that. But out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak, the Bible tells us. So no matter who you are, you have to understand, there's a destiny set on you from the foundation of the world, and you have to know how to operate in that destiny. There is a lady there that wants to teach you how to operate in that destiny. But you must understand the course of your life, no matter who you are, can no longer be selfish and it can no longer be about you. Okay, well, you know, I don't know if I want to go to school or not, you know. No, go to school because it's going to help your kids. I don't have kids. I'm only 17. It's not about you. 
God's already looking into generations. Okay? You say, well, you know, my kids are all out the house. That doesn't stop anything. He's looking into the grandkids you're going to have. Okay? He's already there. And God wants us to be able to operate under that same anointing as we move. It's about the people that God has given to us. Amen. Let me give you a scripture out of Genesis 31, verse 42. Hear the word of the Lord. Unless the God of my father, the God of Abraham, and the fear of Isaac had been with me, surely now you would have sent me away empty-handed. God has seen my affliction and the labor of my hands and rebuke you last night. So listen, this is Jacob praying. This is Jacob praying when he was in the midst of a, of a battle with his own selfishness and he had to get that off of him and he needed God to, to bless him. So here what he says is, <laughs> listen, there's, there's something going on with me. He learned something from his dad that what his dad had, he was able to inherit it. So he said, my dad Isaac, I, I ought to have that blessing on me. My dad, my granddad Abraham, I ought to have that blessing on me. And if, you, if any of you know the story of when Jacob was in Peniel, when, when he was there, he said, Lord, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. Okay? He received that blessing because he understood generational blessing. Now, some of you know your mom, your dad, your grandparents, people that have things. We want the blessings to come forth and not the curses. We want to break the curses. We want to, we want to continue in the blessings. Amen. Let me give you another one. Um, Exodus chapter 3, verse 6. Moreover, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Now, Moses already knew the stories of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But here in the scriptures, he literally had an encounter with the God of his family. How I many you know we all need that? <laughs> and he was, <laughs> he was like, oh man, let me just hide my face right now because I ain't looking like family. Now, do y'all get that? I'm, I don't look like Abraham. I don't look like Isaac. I don't, I don't look like Jacob. I'm not, I'm not there. But he, he said, but God says, this is who you are. You may not look like them. You may not feel like them. But you're that powerful. And you may not look like who God wants you to be. But you are that powerful. Amen? Amen. 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 So here, the scripture tells us, all throughout the scripture, actually, it tells us that there is a woman in your life who will keep you safe from all harm, from all pain, and from all trouble. Are y'all listening, men? Because y'all know some of y'all want your wife to be your mama. I'm telling the truth. And that don't happen like that. You go home, mama, I found this girl. She's just like you. Then you want her to pick up your socks and everything else and everything. It don't work like that. It don't work like that. I got to be honest. Amen. So this woman, must I say that every man needs her. Every woman aspires to be like her. Their lives depend on a relationship with her. You can't step away from it. She is perfect. She is beautiful. Okay? She don't have no makeup on. That's not what makes her beautiful. She's available always to every man and to every woman. We are entreated not to forsake her. But we have to learn how to love her. Y'all listen to me. We have to learn how to love her, and if you love her, she'll look out for you. Amen. Now, these aren't my words. These are biblical words. Amen. Isn't this sounding like the woman you want to marry, young man, or the woman you think you marry? You know I'm telling the truth. She will keep you. She will preserve you. 
and cause you to be free from failure. Who is she? She is Lady Wisdom. The scripture tells us out of Proverbs chapter 4, verse 1. Hear, my children. This is Solomon. Now, I, we're talking about the God of generations, but I want you to listen. He says, hear, my children, the instruction of a father, and give attention to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine. Now, we're in chapter 4, but we didn't even start in chapter 1. He says, I give you good doctrine. What's doctrine? Principle, policies, everything. Here's the law that I'm laying down. Do not forsake my law. When I was my father's son, tender, and the only one in the sight of my mother, he also taught me and said to me, let your heart retain my words, keep my commands, and live. So here in another scripture it says, my father taught me, but my mother loved me. Here's what he's saying. I remember the love of my mom, but it was the teachings of my dad that made a difference. And some of us don't realize that we need to get outside the box. Because I've had people say to me, I ain't calling you pastor. You ain't my pastor. Well, you don't call me pastor because I'm your pastor. You call me pastor because that's the office I walk in. You know, it's about, how many know it's about the office? You, know, you, you can't walk up and say, yo, Donald, what's going on? <laughs> or Mr. Trump, he's Mr. President. Are, are you following me? All right, that's honor. That's respect. All right, so we learn to do some things. And some people say, well, that's not my dad. You ain't my dad. And we hear kids say that all the time. You ain't my father. You ain't my father. Well, I might not be your father, but I'm giving you the words of your father. I'm speaking some things to you that your father would have spoken to you and may still speak to you. Are, are you with me today? Okay. Verse 5. Get wisdom, get understanding. Do not forget, nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her. He's talking about wisdom. And she will preserve you. Love her, and she will keep you. Wisdom is the... Therefore, get wisdom, and in all you're getting, get understanding. So what is wisdom? And we're going to talk about that a little bit more. But listen, wisdom has nothing to do with what you understand here. It's what you know here. To do the right thing. To walk in it. Wisdom will speak to you every day. Listen, before you wake up, it's wisdom that talks to you. By the Spirit of the Lord. And you say, well, I need to hear the voice of the Lord. You're going to be listening to wisdom if you do. Because the Holy Spirit only speaks wisdom to us. So you have to be able to hear the voice of God. You have to be able to know the things of God. Wisdom will speak. Listen, wisdom is in the secret place. Remember the first scripture we read? It's in the secret place. It's not revealed. And some of us go to books to look for things. We go to, we go to internet looking for things. You're not going to find it there. Wisdom comes out of your spirit, man. It comes out of your heart. It's in a secret place. It's stuff that you can't learn anywhere else. Yesterday, we had some fellowship with men um, at the home house. And I appreciate all the men that came out. And let me just say something about a fellowship like that. You see, we can come in here, we can teach certain things, but you can't get wisdom here like that real easy. Okay? It's when you're fellowshipping that you can get the heart of transparency. Amen. Are you there? People say, yeah, I don't need to show up. No, you don't. You know, but wisdom comes out of a heart, okay? And the scripture tells us that men are to teach men, that women, older women, are to teach younger women. Now, we got a lot of younger women, younger men running around today saying, I don't need nobody to teach me nothing. Don't be crazy. Don't be stupid, okay? Because literally, they'll shorten your steps so that you can live longer. When you allow older people to teach you wisdom. Because, see, you saw him, and he flooded your eyes. <laughs> but he may not be good for you. 
And only a mama who done been through that can tell you, girl, stay away. It's a snake in the grass. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> Some things you just don't learn just like that. And there are many of us who want to experience things. You know, I'll just go through myself. You don't have to if you listen to the wisdom. And here's how you know wisdom. Your heart or your spirit will identify with what's being said. It says that Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. Why with men? Simply because he brought forth what was of the spirit and the wisdom that came out of him at such a young age, people began to identify with it. That's why they called him rabbi. Because, man, he's a teacher. He's got wisdom. Nicodemus said, man, you're saying stuff we ain't, we ain't never heard before, but we know it's true. It's not written down. The sages of the ages never wrote this stuff. Sages are the rabbis. They never wrote this stuff. You're bringing forth stuff we've never seen before. What is this? It was the wisdom that he spoke that brought forth that thing for them to bring change. Are y'all with me today? When we do worship like this, that's wisdom. When we create a new thing, when we're moving differently, when we're changing things. And you say, well, how do we ever do it? If you look in the scripture, it was always wisdom that carried people into a new set of grace. Nothing else took them into something new except for wisdom. Listen to the spirit of the Lord. The Bible tells us, well, first of all, let me go back to, to the instruction. David said, I got to instruct my son. If he has to know anything, he has to know wisdom. You know why? Because if my son don't know wisdom, he's going to fall flat on his face. So he began to instruct Solomon. If you read in the Chronicles, you'll see. He began to instruct Solomon and give him nothing but principles of wisdom. Okay? And here's how he did it. Now, according to my scriptures, Solomon had 300 wives and 700 concubines. Not because he loved women all that much, but people, other countries knew how powerful Solomon was. And, the, and kings would come and say, hey, here's my daughter for your wife. They would give them. So if the daughter was his wife, he would never create war against that country. Okay, that was a wise king. So he had 300 wives. It's not like he went out there looking for 300 women. Are y'all with me? And each woman came with two or three servants who were concubines. All right? So everybody get the picture? So here he's got all these women. Now, you, now you say, well, that's a major harem. It is. And you can't tell me that they all look bad. <laughs> Am I telling the truth? So as he comes, he's coming and he's, he understands it. So here David comes along and he knew the future of his son. And he says, you know what? I'm going to instruct him. And I'm going to talk about a woman that he needs to really keep under his belt. And if you read the scriptures, it tells us in all the dimensions of God, the greatest one that Solomon ever had was that of wisdom. Amen. So the word of the Lord says to us out of um, Deuteronomy, it says, the secret things belong to the Lord. The secret things belong to the Lord, but those which are revealed belong to us and to our children. So wisdom is your secret weapon. You're not going to find it out here looking. You're only going to find it when you commune with God. When you spend time, not only with God, but with the people of God who can help bring you into a place of truth. I tell you today... There are many in prison who don't need to be there had they listened to wisdom. There are many in the hospital who don't need to be there had they listened to wisdom. Okay, but they forsook wisdom. And when you forsake wisdom, then failure comes to your life. Amen? Let me give you a scripture. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 3, out of the Message Bible. We're going to go to the Message Bible. If you have leaders there who teach otherwise, 
who refused the solid words of our master Jesus and this godly instruction, tag them for what they are, ignorant windbags. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> who infect the air with germs of envy, controversy, bad-mouthing, suspicious rumors. Eventually, there's an epidemic of backstabbing, and truth is but a distant memory. They think religion is a way to make a fast buck. He's telling us these are the kind of people you stay away from. Verse 6, a devout life does bring wealth, but it's the rich simplicity of being yourself before God. See, because God will instruct you based on how transparent you become. He won't, see, that's wisdom. He won't instruct you if you're not transparent. If you don't want that area of your life touched, God won't touch it. But the minute you open it to him, he's going to touch it. Okay? He's not going to touch it for your demise. He's going to touch it for your grace. He's going to give you truth. He's going to lay things aside. He's going to break things off. You've been going through and you got this sickness that you're going through right now and the sickness is there all because you don't worried yourself to this sickness and you don't know how to break it off. You're on all these medications. And when, when you give it over to God, God can come right along and say, you know what, I just break that thing right off of you right now. I break it right off. You. Well, I fell and the doctors told me I got to go through this, 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 and this. And God says, you know what, we can cut it short in a few days. Bam. How many know God can do that? He can redeem the time. And that's what wisdom does. Wisdom comes forth so that we can redeem the time. So Paul said to this to the Ephesians. He was praying for them in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17. He said that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Wisdom to move in so that which is hidden can be revealed. Wisdom to move in. It's the application of what is God. You can apply. You don't have to have understanding. Understanding means to interpret what God is doing. We don't need to interpret it. I just need you to do it. Apply it. Amen. Tell your neighbor we're going to apply this thing. I told you earlier there's a sevenfold dimension of the Spirit of God. Here's the scripture, Isaiah 11, verse 1. There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, in other words, an offspring, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Okay? A branch. It's going to spread to all of us. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. There's an anointing that's going to come to him. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight is in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge by the sight of his eyes, nor by the hearing of his ears, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. In other words, he will know how to speak in a place of humility out of his own righteousness. And with the breath of his lips, he shall slay the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt of his loins and faithfulness the belt of his waist. Righteousness shall be the belt of his loins. Faithfulness the belt of his waist. In other words, when he's talking about the belt of his loins, this is what holds him together. When he talks about the belt of his waist, that's what holds his armor. Because that's what belts were designed to do. So he's saying he's going to have a belt to hold up his waist. That's going to be his righteousness. But his faithfulness will be his armor. He's going to be faithful and true to the word of God. There's a spirit of wisdom that is in him, and the spirit of wisdom will come out of him. So here in the scriptures, the Bible tells us, let me give you another scripture, it's very important. Matthew chapter 7, verse 1. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. For with judge, what 
what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. So here God gives us a key when it comes to understanding wisdom. We hear the word judgment all the time and we think that's doom and gloom. Here in the scripture, he says it's a place of measurement. It's how I measure things. Are you there? So God's wisdom for you is going to be different than God's wisdom for me in doing things because he measures me different than he measures you. He loves us all the same, but he measures us differently. How does he measure us? He measures us based on maturity, how mature you are. Some of you do that with your kids, and your kids say, well, you love them more than you love me. No, it's not that I love you more. It's that you're older, and the expectations that I have from you are different than I have for the four-year-old, and you're 12 years old. Are you there? How many of you know that's wisdom? So you, you're judging or you're measuring based on that which is before us. So God wants to release so much to every single one of us. So he's going to measure you based on your love for him. How your love grows is based on your maturity. Okay? All right, now listen, everybody, this is the key. This is how wisdom comes. Your love for him will be cited based on the maturity in your life. Amen? Amen. Now I'm going to say something that's very important. If y'all can get this on the, up on the screen, it's good. God will not love you more for your obedience to him. God will not love you less for your disobedience. Some of you are failing to move forward. He's like, you know, I messed up with God, you know, so. You're studying that. He's not. I, I really did bad, you know. God ain't studying you. But you need to get over studying you. You can't hear the voice of wisdom as long as you study you. But when you come to know God, all those things change. You know, well, uh, I got a record, you know, I got a blemish. God doesn't care about your blemish. He loves you because he loves you. And as I said to many of you, I keep telling you, you don't get to pursue God. He chose you. He, Jesus came. He didn't come for you. He died for you, but he came so that his dad can get back to you. And he can capture you. Are you with me today? So God wants us into the place where we can begin to measure our lives based on our love for him. That was joyous love today. You say, well, y'all crazy. No, you just, you know, when you got a real dad in the house, you just run around and be crazy. You know, just, just let it go. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So God wants he wants to continue to measure you out of your love, but you got to love him. And you say, well, why can't God give me this? Boom, 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 boom. He withholds things because it'll cause a stumbling block in your life. Amen. Not that he doesn't want to give it to you, but if I was to give Brother Marquise a set of keys and, to the car, we in trouble. Because <laughs> the boy ain't got no license yet. You, you, do you follow what I'm saying? Um, and let me give him the set of keys. I'm sorry. One of our members here, Jonathan, he, he, he drives a tractor trailer. And usually they have like 20-something gears on them and all that kind of stuff. I'm telling you, you got to know, you gotta know the load. You got to know all that kind of stuff. You can't just get up and do those things. Even um, when I went to flight school, you, you had to literally, you have to know the way to that plane. You know, and that's what they be sitting in the cockpit doing when they tell you, we got too many people on the plane. Because if that weight is not there, that plane ain't getting off the ground. And it may get off the ground, but it might not stay in certain dimensions of the atmosphere. Are, are y'all following me? Okay, so you got to know those things. You got to measure those things. So we know as parents, there's certain things that you give to your children, there's certain things that you don't. And parents, you're going to have to pick up the pieces. Because sometimes you'd be on your cell phone, running your mouth, and hear 
Your kids under 13 are listening to adult conversations where they think they can get involved in them. And you know what? You're causing your children to grow up too quickly. You're allowing your kids to watch stupid on television. I said stupid. Where they're growing up too quickly. There's some stuff out there I can't watch. And I'm an adult. Are you there? And when it pops, I'd be like, oh, man, it hits me right in my heart. Y'all with me? Because wisdom saying, get that stuff off that television. <laughs> you can't let it ride. You don't have that right to let it ride. Why? Because it'll speak to your future. The wrong stuff in front of your children, hear me, this is all wisdom. The wrong stuff in front of your children will collect the demons from the past and usher them into your now and their future. Are you there? They need to be on lockdown. They don't need to come forward. We break those things so they stay back there. Y'all with me today? Let me give you another scripture. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 20. Wisdom calls aloud outside. She raises her voice with, with, in the open square. She cries out in the chief cor- concourses at the openings of the gates of the city. When you wake up, that's what that means. She speaks her words. How long, you simple ones, would you love simplicity? For scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Listen, so this is what she's saying. She's saying, you, you get all your information from the farmer's almanac. You get all your information from the Erie Times News. You get all your information from books. You know, you watch what everybody else is doing, and you do it too. Everything new is nice. That's what wisdom says. You need to get out of simplicity. You need to listen to me. I got another way for you. Verse 23, turn at my rebuke. Surely I will pour out my spirit on you. I will make my words known to you. I love this. Surely, it says, turn at my rebuke. Surely I will pour out my spirit. And I will make my words known to you. So listen, listen. Once you get wisdom, wisdom does something for you. It leads you to miracles. We've been talking about miracles coming forth. How do you get them? You got to follow wisdom. If you look in the scriptures, think of every instance in the gospel when Jesus healed somebody, somebody was going through, they all had to do something. When he spoke to every single one of them, he spoke in the spirit of wisdom. So once they followed the wisdom, miracle happens okay you cannot get a miracle without walking in wisdom maybe it's just one small thing that you need to correct and that will be how you measure your love for God in that place maybe there's a measurement over here but right now I just need you to do this when my son was young I had to correct him and I had to watch him when he's as he got older I correct him, I don't watch him. As he got older, I didn't even correct him. I let him bump his head, bump his head. When he bumped his head, dad, you know, boom, boom, boom. I get it now, I get it. I mean, the wisdom always speaks, okay? You can't forsake the wisdom of your mother, your father. You can't forsake the wisdom of the Bible teachers that you have. You can't forsake the wisdom of the pastors you've had. When you understand wisdom and you walk in that wisdom, those things that you carry with you every morning. If you wake up in the morning and you hear my voice, it ain't because I'm in your bedroom. It's because God's trying to say something to you that was said that was relative to your placement and your growth in life. So when you get a measure or you got a teacher or you got someone in your ministry that has said something to you, when you hear that, you need to register it. 
In other words, sign up quickly and say, oh, no, I got to follow this. I got to walk in this. I got to walk in that truth. When you walk out that truth, bam, the miracle happens. It pops. Two scriptures to let you go. One, Second Peter chapter 1, verse 1. Simon Peter, a bondservant and the apostle of Jesus Christ. To those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Verse 3, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. virtue. Through the knowledge of him. The more you come to know him, the more you come to love him, the more you move in divine nature. Miracles. The more you come to love him, the more you'll come to know him. Move in divine natures. First half of the service here, you say, well, you know, that's a waste of time. I just want to hear the word. I'm sorry, you're missing it. It's not about knowledge. It's about you flowing in the spirit of love. If you haven't been in a real good family, and I didn't have this growing up, but y'all get to act crazy and just be stupid. I mean, it, it's a lot of fun. It is. It works miracles. Well, when you get around people and, you, you know, nobody's serious about anything, uh, we, we, we just act crazy and we learn to bond. We learn to know each other. We learn to love on one another. Amen? So Peter says here, he says, God has given you access to his divine nature. You're not the divine nature, but he's given you access to that. And therefore, the more you learn how to measure your love for God, the more you're going to see miracles moving in your life. Aside from that, there are things. If it's not divine, it's divination. It's an imitation of what is real. Are you there? God doesn't run that camp. The woman who was following Paul and Silas, she was following them, said, hey, did y'all meet the men of the most high God? Wow, they're doing signs, wonders, and miracles. You would have thought she was a great advertisement, but it was only wisdom that spoke to the heart of Paul who says, mm -mm, this woman is not for us. And he had to literally shut her down at one particular occasion. You have to know the difference between divination and divinity. You walk into any place where you're ready to buy something, people will come up and they will tell you all kinds of stuff. They'll want to sell you everything. And then they will ask you, do you want to buy the warranty? Well, you tell me, why are you buying a warranty on a blender? Half the price. Talk to me. On a blender, half the price of the blender. You're buying a warranty. I'm sorry, and it's a year warranty. If you made a product and it breaks down in a year, you're going to give me my money back whether I got a warranty or not. <laughs> Y'all with me? We don't play that. Oh, no. Why did you make the product? You say, we got so much out there, that, you know, that they're lemons. I'm, I ain't, none of your stuff should be lemons. It should not even be in the stores. And if it is a limit, you pay me my money back without a warranty. It's important that we understand a lot of those things. They get out there and they gimmick us. You know, oh, here, buy this car. Well, how much can you afford a month? You know, and then they give you a 72-month note on a car. Ain't no wisdom in that at all. Because let me tell you something. If you buy a car for 72 months, that's six years, by the way. All right, you're going to get tired of paying the note after the second year. You're going to be done. You're going to be like, I got to get rid of this car. And you're going to trade that in, and then you're going to be, uh, you're going to have to get gap insurance if they sell it to you. Why? Because the value of the car is going to be less than what you owe on the car. There's no wisdom in that. But what is it all about? Divination says it's about the greed. We don't call it that, but that's what it is. 
It's about the fast buck, the money. And we have to have the wisdom on us to know what is good and what's not good. All right? Are, are y'all with me? I was with my son one time. We were somewhere, and he was down at his school, and I was down there visiting him. And um, some sister approached him. And down at that school, everybody looked like it's a fashion show. I mean, it was bad. I told Denise when we first rolled up there, I was like, this is not good for him. <laughs> we, we, we are going to have to pray. <laughs> so, so we walked up to the table. I mind my business, and he said, hi, I'm Caleb Nelson reporting. And uh, she looked up. Well, hello, like that. So he stood there talking because, you know, she showed her interest. So I walked over to him real quick. I said, time to get stepping. That's all I said. <laughs> that was my wisdom. <laughs> all right, y'all too long in this conversation. <laughs> time to get stepping. Y'all follow me. I'm trying to save the boy. You know, you can tell me upperclassmen or whatever you want, but I ain't thinking about upperclassmen. I'm thinking about my future. Are you there? Because you're in school right now, and should you go out and do what you're not supposed to do, who's going to take care of your baby? Okay? My money is not to take care of your baby. It's to give an inheritance later on. <laughs> Does everybody understand what I'm saying? All right? So you got to give the whip. You, and you can't say, well, you know, I went through it. Just let my kids go through it. No, we don't want them to go through it. We want them to skip over it. <laughs> Glory to God. Get by it. Oh, no. Man. Huh. You, you, you don't know the pain that that thing caused me. You, uh, I look nice now, son, but you don't know the pain that that thing caused. Skip over that. Don't do it. You know, you angry. You ready to go out there and fight. Bro, don't do it. Don't do it. You don't know her. You don't know their family. You don't know nothing. All you see is some young little dude who just trying to sow his oats and figure out how tough he is. And you go out there and you're ready to be fighting. And here you only have one uncle and you only have one aunt and, and, and all that kind of stuff going on. And here in the background, he got six uncles, six aunts, five of them who have already been to prison and come out and think they got it. And you about to go up in there and fight that kind of stuff? Oh, you have no idea what you're getting yourself into. Wisdom says, hold on. You just met her? And she's trying to tell you to come over? You just met her? And you didn't know she had six other sisters, all who got pregnant out of wedlock? Bro. That's a sign. Wisdom will tell you before you got to the house. And even when you get there and nobody else is there, your wisdom will raise up in the air. You will, spell, you will smell divination so quickly. It will say, run. You'll say, I'm not feeling comfortable. I'm going to tell you now, if you get in that situation, one word, run. Run. Don't do it. Ladies, don't you ever fall to a smile. Don't you ever fall to somebody who's got their chest looking nice and got guns on them. Don't fall to that stuff. That is not wisdom. That is not wisdom. God will tell you what you need to look for and you will know ahead of time. You will know ahead of time. You can't get out there and just do anything. You have to live by the spirit of the Lord. Knowledge is good, but knowledge can be puffed up. You have to live by the spirit. Parents, when you see some of your children, you know what they're prone to. Don't sit there and say, he act just like his father. And you have no love for his daddy. <laughs> I'm okay with that. But just don't leave it there. You need to pull them aside and say, let me give you some wisdom. And so, Mom, yeah, I'm, I'm going through that. Well, how did you know that? Because your father was like that. My mama was talking about my dad one day, and I was like, Shundo Bokungura Sata. I didn't tell her, man, <laughs> I felt like that at one time. And I was like, that is crazy. And then she said that I just found out less than a year ago how my parents really met and how they, they, they met 
at work, but every Thursday and Friday and Saturday night, they were out dancing at 2 o'clock in the morning. I said, man, I, I, no wonder I like to dance so much. <laughs> My dad used to be a dancing fool. Listen, you got to take wisdom where it is. And sometimes you'll never find it until you sit among God, sit among family, and sin, sit among others who God sent your way to teach you wisdom. It doesn't come in an age. You say, well, it has to be older. Wisdom is not always older. It, sometimes it's younger. Don't pull an age. It's all about their maturity in him. And when you learn to walk in wisdom, you'll find a miracle around the door. Just on the other side. Come on, stand to your feet. All right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Wisdom, I didn't go into everything, but wisdom has an enemy. It's shame. Never put yourself in a place of shame. When shame is standing at the door, wisdom is always standing there to confront it and to defeat it. So you don't have to feel sad, rebuked, God doesn't want to bring shame on you. He wants to bring glory on you. So if you would just turn things over to him, he'll work a miracle. I didn't know how I'd get out of this, but God knew. He'll get you out. There's a way that seems like no man can get through. But he makes a way out of no way. Are you there? So don't give up on God. <laughs> Walk in his wisdom. So Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your honor. We thank you that you laid wisdom at our door. You said it would never leave us nor forsake us. You said we're not to forsake it. But even every morning when we wake up, when our eyes open, that it will cry aloud unto us. It will speak to our heart. It would follow us through our day. Lady wisdom will always be with us. That is your spirit, Lord. So open our hearts to receive the voice of the Lord by the spirit of wisdom. That we might know truth and that we might find our destiny. We honor you for that in Jesus' name. Amen.